thanks for joining us, Ollie. Um, we haven't spoken to you in a while, to be fair, and it's been quite a whirlwind time for you. Um, how are you doing at the moment? All good, all good. Can't complain, really. Uh, tough situation for everyone, but um, yeah, keeping well, family's healthy, um, so can't complain. That's the main thing. Um, talking next to the city, uh, you had quite a difficult journey, really, um, to get started with the club. Um, a trial at the age of nine in 2003, which was unsccessful, um, but then you ended up come joining at under 11 level a couple of years later. And do you remember much about this point and how you were feeling? Yeah, I think I was sad when I, you know, I didn't get into the centre of excellence, but I think it was um, it was major for me, really, to to not be accepted because I felt like it, it helped me, it allowed me to go away and, and play with my friends and just enjoy football really and have fun. And as you say, um, you sort of kicked on then um, and in 2013-14 playing for the under-18s you scored 30 goals so you think, you know, the, the years leading up to that sort of helped with the, you know, the not being accepted and stuff for you to really push on? Yeah, I think youth team football definitely helped me a lot. I had two uh, coaches that helped me, which are uh, Lee Skirms and Kevin Nicholson. They helped me, um, yeah, massively in my development. Um, improved, so I was I was thankful for them for for that. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed my time in, in the youth team. We had such a good team. We had a lot of, a lot of good players. Um, Matt Gay is still there. Gossy. Um, we had a lot of good players. So. Yeah, and you spent 13 years um, at the club, and majority of those in the academy. Um, just what was your time like with those coaches you were talking about? I think it was different. Lee and, and Kev were very different. Kev was um, he was more like a mate. Uh, he got on he got on well with everyone, and um, was always up for a laugh. But he was really into his his tactics and very detailed in. in how he explained the way he wanted us to play. Whereas um, Lee was a bit more firm, um, got us working really hard. So two different um, approaches, but uh, both positive outcomes. Um, and how how were you integrated into the first team as an academy player? Like, how did it kind of work? Did you were you separate to the first team, or did you get involved with any sort of training and stuff? I remember one one day coming in and. Kev actually said to me, "You're training with the first team uh, today," and I was. I thought he was he was joking because we had that sort of relationship, but I didn't believe him. So when I when I uh, actually got to the first team pitch, I realised I was training with them, and um, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a shock, really. And what was that experience like? Do you remember? You know, cause you, did you finally feel like you were getting somewhere at that point? Not really. I felt like I would train with the first team, but you didn't really see a pathway. You didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, you just try and train and, and impress, really. But it's hard because you're very nervous at the start. Absolutely. And one of the key things for the academy is that they create, they say, well-rounded young men as well as good footballers. Um, do you feel that made an impression on who you are today? Yeah, I think so. Um I like to think I'm a, a nice person and uh, my family helped raise me well, but um, Exeter definitely played a part in that. And it's imp it was even the little things such as making you shake hands with everyone in the morning and things like that, wasn't it? Just the small stuff that makes the difference. Yeah, I think um, manners um, go a long way. And yeah, I think we just all had respect for each other. We all have respect for everyone around the club, you know, so family-based club, a lot of volunteers and stuff like that. So it's nice to show some respect to people that are giving up their time for, for nothing, really. Um, you then end up signing a professional contract and making your debut as a sub away at Hartlepool at the end of the 13-14 season. Um, what are your memories of that? Quite a long way to go to make your debut. Yeah, uh, ages. I can remember staying up in the hotel. I think it was one of my first away trips, actually. And just, it was... I come on the pitch for maybe what fifteen minutes. I gave the ball away mostly every time I got it. Um, but apart from that, it was you know it was unbelievable to me. <laughs> Make my debut seems so long ago. And then um, the following season, you scored your first goal 
um, in for Exeter City in the Johnson's Paint Trophy away at Coventry. Um, that must have been a good feeling too. Yeah, I was actually watching my interview back from after the after the game the other week. Uh, I'm just laughing at it with one of my friends because I completely avoided the the questions and I was just talking about my goal. I was absolutely buzzing and we just lost three one. So um, yeah, it was nice to get my first goal, but. Uh, it's a shame I didn't kick on too much mm. after that after that game. As you say, you um you were often on the bench um the following season and then uh, making free appearances before joining Western Supermare on loan. Um, was going on loan something that you wanted to do personally as well at the time, just to get playing football? Not really, as I felt I was in and around the first team, I was training. That was my mindset, but uh, in the manager's head, obviously I was a bit further off than... Um, I thought so yeah it was good to go out on, on loan and, and gain some first team experience play for three points and, and see what men's football was about so it definitely played a massive part in, in my development and as you say it's um, 10 goals and 25 appearances um, playing men's football we must have you know helped put you in the manager's mind fully after that I don't think so I, I don't think it did because when I went back in pre-season on, I, don't, I still don't think he was sure but uh, I kept working hard and um, I finally got a chance a bit later on in the year. But it may have it may have shown him that I can, you know, cope with men's football. But um, I still don't think he it, I was the main choice. Yeah, as you say, it took until October for you to be involved fully. And you made your first league start um, in December uh, in the Devon Derby at Home Park of all games. Um, that must have been quite an experience. Yeah. I can remember I only had a bowl of cereal for breakfast. Um, I went in, we had a, a meeting in the changing room before and I wasn't really paying attention. He wrote, uh, he had pre-written the, the team and he was going to reveal it with uh, uh, the piece of paper. He was going to unreveal it. And um, I looked and saw my name and thought, I was so shocked. I was kind of, I didn't know what to do really. But um, it ended up turning out to be a, a great game. Definitely. When Ryan Harley beat about six players and slotted the ball away, it must have been uh, pretty good to be on the pitch at that point. Yeah, I think that should go down as an assist. <laughs> I tried to run across I tried to run across the pitch, but um, <laughs> ended up getting tackled. But I'll take that as an assist. What a finish from Ryan. Definitely. Um, talking about Tiz, um, he was the one to give you a chance at Exit City. Um, what was he like as a manager and do you still keep in touch with him now? I think he was a great manager. Uh, I haven't kept in touch with him too much. He texts me now and then. Um, now and then, when he when he sees me play, or last year, I, I spoke to him quite a bit when he was at MK Dons, but not so much as now. Um, but yeah, I think he was a great manager. You know, he had a, a massive part to play on my career, um, a crucial part from the transition from youth team football to men's football. And, um, you know, I can only thank him for giving me the opportunity to, to play in the first team. He recently mentioned in an interview that um, he felt like you had hit a bit of a wall when you turned professional. Um, do you sort of recall this and how you got past that? Yeah, I felt like I was a first team player when I hadn't even really played. You know, I'd signed a professional contract. It sounded good, but... I'd never made any appearances. I was just on the bench and I felt like I was a first team player when, you know, reality was I was nowhere near it. And, um, yeah, I just needed a, a reality check, really. So I think going on loan, that really helped me. And then you uh, remained patient, um, but by March, you kind of forced your way into the team. Um, did scoring that late equaliser against Portsmouth kind of help kick off that form? Yeah, definitely. I feel like that was, you know, that was the start of a, a great run for me personally. And yeah, I just felt like it gave me that opportunity to then express myself and and go and enjoy first team football. I think Clinton Morrison likes to take a lot of claim for that goal as well, doesn't he? In terms of the assist <laughs> and developing you. All he all he had to do was roll it a couple yards. But, <laughs> We'll give him the credit. Um, we've got to talk about the Devon Derby in April. Um, 
behind until the 80th minute, and then you turned and took a shot which sort of wriggled its way in through um, the keeper. When you hit, did you think it was going, or was it just one of those you know turn and shoot moments? Yeah, it was literally just turn and shoot. I think uh, Ryan passed it into me. I had turned, and the defender was uh, quite far away from me. So I thought we've got nothing to lose. We're one nil down. May as well shoot. I don't think I had a shot all game either. So um, and then luckily keepers fumbled it and it's gone in. And then um, in, we're in extra time, um, and you score one of the best goals St James Park's seen in recent times. Um, pick the ball up 40 yards out, jink past a few players, and then put it right on the top corner. Um, how are you feeling as that hit the back of the net? I can, I can remember it now. I got goosebumps when I when I saw it hit the back of the net. Um, I didn't know what to do. I think I'd previously been on like four yellow cards or something like that, so I couldn't get another yellow card, so... I wanted to take my T-shirt off, but I um, just pulled it up instead and put it over my head. Yeah, I remember that. It looked, it looked a little odd, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing looking back, but um, I didn't expect to score that, really. So um, there was no prepared celebration. It's funny in your mind that you thought straight away about not getting booked, though, as well. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's unbelievable what, what can run through your mind in such a short space of time. Um, the goal was described as lucky and that you had slipped by the Plymouth manager at the time. How did that make you feel hearing that afterwards? I can remember, yeah, a few days after he said it. Um, but by then, you know, I'd already celebrated and I wasn't really thinking about it. So we won the game and I wasn't too bothered. And uh, Did you get up to much celebrations after the match? I mean, I'm sure three points on Devon Derby is the best thing you could hope for as a City player. Yeah, I was going to my friend's birthday, actually, um, that night. So it was the best way to celebrate. <laughs> um, you ended that season with nine goals in 22 appearances, and that really set you up for the following campaign, didn't it? Yeah, um, I definitely feel like it It gave me a, a kind of taste of, of what it's going to be like. But the, uh, the following year, I felt like I put too much pressure on myself at the start. Mm. You know, because I'd done so well uh, in that short space of time, I thought I'd do even better with uh, the whole season to yeah, play. It was a bit of a crazy season. As you say, you know, the team didn't start off well that season, was in the relegation zone until, you know, early December, and then um, ended up confirming a playoff spot at Doncaster in April. Um, I mean, could you put your finger on what had gone wrong at the start? We had a lot of injuries. Mm. I can remember when we played... We played Brentford, we got to extra time, um, and all the boys were knackered. You know, we had a lot of games in, in quick succession, and yeah, we just had a lot of injuries really, so it was taking a, a toll on the body, um, and mentally I was just putting too much pressure on myself also, so it wasn't going to plan really. And your goal away at Leighton Orient in November, sort of um, in a 1-0 win, really kicked off that revival, didn't it? Yeah, I think we, we kicked on from there. Um, leading up to Christmas, we had a good, a really good run. Um, but still, I think we won quite a few games and it still didn't feel like we were, we were going up the league too much. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel that that was the, the game that probably kicked us on. Um, you went on to score your first hat-trick away at Newport on New Year's Eve. Um, how did it feel when that third one went in? And have you still got the ball from that day? Yeah, I can remember Lou, the kit lady, saying to me the day before, I think you're going to get a hat-trick tomorrow. And um, I was like, look, I'll take that. And then I can remember I started off in, I think, centre midfield. And it wasn't working, so Tiz moved me a, a little bit further forward. And um, yeah, the goals started flowing, really. The third but, one, third um, one was a nice one as well, wasn't it? It was um, pick, you, around the keeper. Yeah, that was it. And then just slotted it home from like 20, 30 yards. Yeah, just rolled in. Just about, um, and that pitch made it difficult to roll in, I think, didn't it? I know, exactly. The worst pitch I've, I've played on to date, but you know, I'm grateful I got my hat trick on that. And yeah, I do have, I, I do have the ball, it's on, the, on my stand downstairs. Um, what was the mood like when you finally confirmed that playoff place as well after such a long, difficult season? Yeah, it was unbelievable. We beat Doncaster. Um, Jordan scored an unbelievable free kick. 
uh, that we've been working on in training and it didn't go quite to plan like that. But, um, yeah, it was kind of against odds, really. We, we weren't expected to beat Doncaster and we've ended up we've ended up beating them and cementing a place in the playoffs. I think you had the opportunity to score the third, didn't you? I think you robbed the defender and then rolled in Liam, who finished. Yeah, I, th- I, I look at that goal back and... Craig Woodman was actually saying to me as soon as I tackled the defender, I should have lobbed the keeper. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's in hindsight, isn't it? But, yeah, I thought I've got a square to Liam and, and definitely cement the place. Absolutely. Then we go on to face Carlisle in the playoffs, who we'd lost 3 2 on both games, so it was guaranteed to be uh, dramatic. Um, first game at their place, finished in a 3 0 draw. But I think we could have easily won that game. And uh, do I recall you had a goal, like wrongly disallowed for offside? It looked. You look pretty level, I think. Yeah, I wasn't offside, um, which I was, you know, I was fuming about. I wasn't offside; I was on, clearly onside. But that would have that would have finished, put the nail on the head as well in that game. Um, and I don't think they would have had a chance for the second leg. But that's the way it goes, and um, I think everything happens for a reason. Exactly, and then you know, and Bobby gets lobbed from a weird angle, like. You know, uncharacteristically, and you think it's not your day at that point, I assume. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, I, well, I can remember that freak goal. It was a cross. Mm. The wind's just blown it, and from there on, they were just piling pressure onto us. Um, but yeah, the second leg, we've, we've turned it around. What, what a day that was, too. Um, you scored twice to put City 2 0 up on the day, an early goal, and then. Well, goal on the seventh night from minute is probably one of your your better ones. The um, swivel and then put it in the top corner. Um, and you, yeah. your celebration showed how much you enjoyed that one. I think. Yeah, definitely. I think that was that was a good goal actually on my weaker foot top corner. Um, and then I thought the game was was definitely finished. Then um, I can remember shouting at Joel hmm. after because he went on a mazy run. He beat about five players. All he had to do was square it to me and I would have tapped it in, but he missed and then they end up going and scoring two goals. So I think the last one, equaliser came in like the 89th minute or something, didn't it? I mean, how, how, how did you react? You look at footage and you see a few heads drop, but you think, you know, here we go again. Yeah, I was expecting to go to extra time. You know, I was thinking, well, I can't believe they've just scored again after the first leg. It's, it's happened, we've thrown it away again, but... Um, Obviously, Stacey scores that unbelievable goal with his weaker foot. <laughs> and I don't think he's ever hit a, sh- a strike like that before. Where were you on the pitch when uh, when it went in? I can't even, I can't can't even remember. remember. <laughs> can't even remember, but I can remember running over, knee sliding. Me and Troy Brown knee slided, mm. and it was the driest bit of sand <laughs> you'll ever see. And uh, we didn't quite slide. Didn't Troy end up hurting himself a little bit in that as well? Do yeah, I think- the story. Yeah, yeah, Troy bruised up his knee a little bit. Um, what were those post match celebrations like on the pitch when the whistle went as well? You know, fans pouring on to celebrate with you guys. Oh, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I can just remember everyone running onto the pitch. Oh, oh, it was just crazy. Even after the game, it was just, it was unbelievable. Such a good time. And um, in the changing rooms as well, I remember uh, hearing a loud rendition of Sweet Caroline at the time yeah because I felt like after we we drew against them in the in the first leg they were celebrating a little bit and were a little bit loud and rubbing it in our faces so we um, we were banging on the changing room wall and, and singing Sweet Caroline um, so City made it to Wembley for the first time in a, in a long time um, to face Blackpool um, you know what was it like building up to that was there a were you putting a lot of pressure on yourselves? Yeah, I can remember, well, personally, the night before the game, I was just itching. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I felt a little bit sick. I felt nervous. Um, yeah, it was a horrible feeling. I mean, it would end in a 2-1 defeat. I mean, what do you recall of that day? Was it just one of those things that, you know, just didn't feel like you could really get the win on the day after they went 2-1 up? I feel like personally it was a, you know, it was a massive day. 
it um, the whole atmosphere and the whole day just took over my emotions really and it's one thing that I do regret because I I didn't play well and I didn't feel like I uh, I left it all out on the pitch really I didn't I didn't work hard enough and when I look back that year was was such a good year personally as and collectively as a team but um, yeah I I always think about Wembley and yeah just wish we got promoted really that season you scored 16 goals and got 13 assists in 52 appearances and that saw you pick up the EFL Young Player of the Season award. I mean, that must have been something you were proud of at the time and now. Yeah, looking back, I don't think I give myself enough credit really because a lot of a lot of unbelievable players have, have won that award um, and gone on to do some some great things in the game. So, you know, it's a, it's a nice feeling to get that award and I'm very grateful. And I guess it takes pride of place in your home as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's at my mum's house. She right. keeps all my trophies. <laughs> keeps them safe for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, you had a really good relationship with the fans um, at St James Park as well. Um, and, you know, they still talk about you to this day. Um, did you enjoy playing in front of them? Yeah, I did. Uh, I love the big bank, the energy. Um, it was nice and... I definitely feel like as a homegrown player, they they give you that uh, a bit extra more support um, and you definitely feel it. Um, and do you still keep in touch with some of your former teammates? I'm sure you and MJ's relationship is still strong, isn't it? Yeah, I'm always speaking to MJ. He's one of my close friends and, um, you know, I'll always keep in touch with him. Um, I speak to, yeah, I speak to a few of the boys here and there. So, yeah. Um, if you had to pick one, what would you say would have been your favourite match you played for Exeter? I would say the... I'd probably have to say the, the, the semi-final, Carlisle. Can't get much just more dramatic the way, than that. Exactly. <laughs> just because of the way it ended, it was just, yeah, unbelievable. I could probably predict this, but favourite goal? I'm guessing it has to be that um, one against Plymouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got to go for that. I'm sure. If you, how many times have you watched it back since? Would you say easily over a hundred? <laughs> easily over a hundred. Yeah. Um, during the 16-17 season, there have been a lot of speculation linking you with you know unnamed championship clubs and things. And you were quite young at this point still. How did you cope with that speculation? I feel like uh, I really wanted to. There was a big part of me that wanted to stay because. You know, I'm from Exeter, to, uh, all my family were there, my friends. But then also there was a big part of me that just wanted to go because it's a bigger club and the championship. So, you know, there was pros and cons to it both. But in the in the end, I'm, I was glad I, I stayed and, um, and waited for the end of the season. And as you say, um, you ended up joining Brentford, jumping up to the championship. And um, what was it about them that stood out to you? I feel like they had shown a lot of interest for the, the previous couple of windows um, and I definitely feel really wanted. You know, their style of play suit, suited me and, and still does. Um, and yeah, I just felt wanted really. And they're very much a community club like Exeter, um, doing a lot for the local community. Was that something else that you liked about them? Yeah, to be honest, that wasn't something I, t I took into consideration, but... It was definitely uh, there was definitely a, a resemblance there. Um, I definitely felt like Exeter and Brentford are two similar teams, not just because they play in red and white, <laughs> but uh, the way it's ran. Um, it was a slightly smaller club in the in the Championship, and um, it just had a good feel about it. And you um, you're often seen giving back to the fans and the community as well um, at Brentford. Do you think your academy upbringing has sort of helped you with? you know, seeing the worth in that. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's um, got a part to play in it. But I feel like, you, you know, it only takes two seconds to sign an autograph or, or write a message back to people and it, it can make their day. So um, I try and do that as much as possible. Um, ten goals in your first two seasons at Brentford as well, which isn't a bad way to, you know, make a mark, is it? Yeah, I think... My first season, I, I 
I overachieved in, in what I thought I would do. I didn't expect to play as many games as I did. I think I played the most games in the in the league out of everyone, uh, you know, apart from the goalkeeper, of course. But um, yeah, I definitely feel like I overachieved and um, it set me up for a, a good following season. Absolutely. Um, you've moved to more of a centre forward role, or more of like a number nine, for the last season, scoring twenty two goals as well. I mean, you must be over the moon with that. Yeah, it's been a, a little bit unexpected because for a start, I didn't expect to play up front, but you know, I'm I'm loving it at the moment, and um, hopefully, I can go on and score some some more. Um, and you signed a new four-year deal with Brentford last season. Is your aim very much to score the goals that will get them into the Premier League? You know, that's the dream. Uh, if I didn't see my long-term future here, then I, I wouldn't have signed the contract. But, you know, that's the that's the main the main aim, to get promoted to the Premier League like everyone else. It must be quite an exciting time at Brentford as well, you know, with the new stadium almost being finished as well. Are you looking forward to playing there? Yeah, really looking forward to it. I haven't visited visited it yet, as I've um, you know of what's going on. But um, hopefully, it will be good when we when we get back going. And um, I'm looking forward to playing that. And will you miss Griffin Park as well? Because it's quite a unique old star stadium, isn't it? Like kind of you know reminiscent to St James Park in some respects. Yeah, I feel like Griffin Park is. Is massive for us, you know. The crowd get behind us. Um, it kind of gives you that that extra support you need. It's like a twelfth man, really. Um, as cliche as it sounds, but um, it definitely it definitely helps. Well, thanks for your time, Ollie. Thanks for speaking to us, and hopefully your um, your season no will get concluded in some way soon, and you'll know where you're at.